Good evening and welcome to the DFF Cinema. It's very nice to have you with us on this Sunday night for this special screening of Miguel's War by Eliane Rahib. Uh, Eliane woke up today at five. She was presenting her film yesterday in Tunis and she had a three hour delay in Tunis. She had a 30 minute delay in Paris and she had a 45 minute delay with her suitcase in Frankfurt. And she's with us tonight, so we're very happy that she made it. <laughs> but oddly enough, this was not the most difficult journey that Eliane has done uh, over the course of her career so far. This was just entertainment, I guess, for her. Uh, Eliane is a Lebanese documentary filmmaker. She has been really active with the documentary scene in Lebanon. She has presented several documentary films um, over the last decade that all deal with the Lebanese civil war, its trauma, its effect on the citizens. Sometimes she made lighter things as well all along the way, uh, but she's very interested actually in human nature and um, how society can shape human nature. Her, one of her, I think her feature debut, Sleepless Night, which was a film produced in 2012, had an incredible journey all over the planet. And in one of these stops, Barcelona, she got to meet this interpreter, Miguel, uh, who in the end went to Eliane and tell her his own special story. I would let Eliane present her film, but I would just want you to know that uh, the film was presented this year at the Berlinale Panorama. Um, the film has won the Teddy Award at the Panorama, which is really a fantastic thing for a Lebanese film to make it as an LGBTIQ film winning the Teddy Award. But it also won the second prize of the Berlinale Panorama. So the ride that you're going to have tonight is really a very special ride. My advice would just be to be patient with the story that Elian is going to tell you. But once you're into the story, and once you really discover what an incredible character Miguel is, I think this will be a fantastic journey. Before I give the words to Eliane, I just want you to know, because I happen to know Eliane very well, um, I asked a very uh, special colleague of ours to really moderate the Q&A that's going to take place after the film, Eline Geritsen, who is the director of the Go East Festival. That that is organized here at the FF and Helene also most welcome and thank you for moderating the talk tonight. Eliane, would you like to present your film? I will give you another microphone. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I hope you're fine. Um, I'm very happy that uh, Rabia is curating this uh, program called uh, Southern Lights and uh, this is maybe the fourth uh, screening of the film in Germany um, and uh, it has been uh, so far very well received. Um, I just want to tell you that this film was a journey for me uh, with Miguel, the main protagonist a journey of uh, contradictions, of uh, hope, of uh, love, of fear, of uh, trauma. And uh, mirroring many, many uh, things from ourselves, our inner selves, our dark selves, but also with lightness. Uh, so, um, I tried to make a film that resembled to the character, to how I met him and how we went into this journey together. So, you will see me also in the film. Um, uh, I, uh, I just want you to live this film, just let yourself. And um, also, uh, if you are a bit uh, shocked, or not you may be shocked, but in the Arab world, yes. <laughs> Uh, but maybe challenged or, um, I don't know, any negative feeling you have, just give it a chance until the end. And uh, we will be here to talk about it later. Yes. Thank you so much. And thank you, Helene. Thank you, Rabia, for everything. See you.
So this was Miguel's War, a film by Elian Rahib. We're very happy that Elian is with us. And we're also very happy to have our good friend and colleague, Elin Geritsen from Go East, who's going to moderate this conversation. We know it's a bit late, so thank you for being patient with us. And also, there is a space at the end. Helen has prepared a space for you also to ask questions. So thank you so much. Genau, so ist es. Danke, Ravi. Um, guten Abend. Um, schön, dass Sie noch da sind. Um, welcome, Elian. Uh, it's been a long day for you. Um, before we uh, start talking about uh, the many topics that you touch upon in this film, um, let's maybe talk about form first, because that's, I, uh, I have no doubt, this is the first impression you as an audience will also have had of the film. It has a lot of different elements. Um, uh, it's, it's very fast edited, especially in the beginning. Uh, and you combine um, in this film about a man with a complex history and background, uh, you chose a quite complex mix of, uh, of different style elements. Um, It's uh, uh, parts where you yourself appear in the film. Um, there's animation, obviously. Um, there's conversations between you and Miguel. There's staged castings um, with actors playing his, his family members. Um, there's archive. Um, how did you decide to use all these different elements? Maybe you can talk a little bit about that process. Um. I tried to make a film that resembles to the protagonist uh, himself and to the world that he has uh, in his uh, self and to his uh, cra crazy uh, ideas um, or psyche, let's say, to his psyche. Uh, and uh, I uh, wanted also to reflect the, somehow the honesty of uh, this process uh, with uh, everything in it, the failures, the tentatives of uh, telling your story, the um, failure of a filmmaker sometimes to have what he wants, the manipulation that the protagonist uh, uh, and me are doing to each other, uh, our complicity, but sometimes our uh, Uh, also maybe uh, tension that you can see in the film. Uh, and uh, I wanted also the, uh, the, the character to be a mirror, to mirror uh, other, other stories than himself, because I believe that he belongs to a bigger story, which uh, for me is very important, is how family, religion, and fascism mess with your identity and makes you un not uh, understanding who you are and hate yourself. So when I first heard uh, Miguel telling me his story, in our first encounter, I realized how many uh, layers of complex. And when was this? When did you meet? What uh, 2014, the first time we met. I realized that uh, uh, he has uh, layers of complexes of inferiority, uh, which came from these, these institutions I was talking about, the family, the religion, and the fascism. And uh, uh, I also, of course, uh, uh, realized that uh, what his, his own narrative, how he tells his story, uh, is uh, more like an epical, uh, or let's say a novel, But when it's confronted to the truth, or mm, there's nothing called truth, but at least to the reality of the places or the facts, uh, uh, we don't understand where is, uh, uh, where is the truth, where it's not. Uh, the denial, the fantasy, uh, uh, there are layers of complexity that unfold. Uh, and uh, I understood later also why when I consulted uh, a psychotherapist that, uh, in fact, people who live trauma, they not invent a story for themselves, it's not invent, but they fabricate a kind of narrative that makes them survive, in fact. So uh, uh, that the, when I understood this, uh, it, it became very interesting for me. 
it becomes also one of the themes of the film how you tell your story when 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 you are you've been traumatized and uh, it was not important at the end for me to understand what was the truth and what was not but the truth of this character when i met him that was the important and what was he trying to tell me and the metaphor uh, um, so to to tell all this story and all this encounter and all these complexities, I tried to to uh, to invent some form uh, which uh, could at least uh, uh, makes this psyche accessible to the audience who is watching uh, the film. For example, the everything that was taboo. Uh, fantasy, sacred. I opted for the animation because that was for me the best way to 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 illustrate this. And uh, the theater came from the fact that he is a performer himself, and that he likes to f perform his own story. And I found okay, it's very nice that we bring actors casting, and that they they perform these uh, moments that. Uh, for me, were key moments in his youth. Uh, and uh, I thought that maybe b when we repeat them, they will uh, become more uh, banal. So it will maybe unlock for him the, the stuckness in these uh, uh, situations that he, he were important situations that really uh, made him uh, feel inferior at that moment. Uh, the documentary, of course, because I could have done a uh, fiction out of this film without documentary at all, but because Miguel was uh, uh, still searching for something, I felt that it's important that he uh, stays in the film as a real person and that we unfold his story with all these uh, mediums. And when did you decide to, to take him back to Lebanon to go on his journey? Uh, when I felt that uh, he is living in Spain, but his all, all his emotions are in Lebanon. <laughs> that I mean, this was from the encounter uh, when we... Uh, in fact, the encounter was uh, a, a bit uh, unusual that after my film that did, dealt with uh, the civil war, he was the interpreter and he was very, very tensed uh, when he was interpreting the debate and I, I thought, why is he tense? I didn't know him. So uh, after the film, we, we talked and he told me that he also lived the civil war. He didn't want to see it in a film and he was very moved. And he, it was the first time he sees again Lebanon in, uh, in images. Uh, and and uh, that was made him uncomfortable. So he told me his story, really like he talked, he talked, he talked for three hours and then the next day for three other hours and then like he was really talking and I felt that it's liberating for him to talk. Um, so, uh, so yeah. What I really like about this film is um, the thing you mentioned, like the, the mutual manipulation between protagonist and filmmaker, but that it's also a collaborative process very much. And um, um, I think it's safe to say that this film really changed his life. And um, Miguel is now also traveling festivals with your film. So it really had like a, a big impact on his life, it yes, seems. Yes, I think he was waiting for something to uh, to make him change a bit uh, uh, the, the the stagnation. Okay, of course now he is, he lives in Barcelona. He's a successful interpreter, but he wants something more. I, I he wants a, a meaning for his life, and uh, I think that this film, while while bringing him back to Lebanon. And finishing with that part that was a heavy uh, on, on him uh, is a, a bit uh, helping him to move further. Um, and I think he understood many things about uh, himself. And uh, now he's going everywhere with the film and uh, he's very happy to share his experience with people who talk to him after the film. Um, it's for me. It's very. It's very good. Uh, what he's living is very. Is very nice. Um, 
in a lot of your films you you deal with uh, with Lebanon and its repressed history um, with the civil war um, and now you indeed found a, a character that really embodies this complexity um, uh, we, we have not just his uh, repressed memories but also his sexuality then a complicated Syrian Lebanese family background um, Christian religion uh, there's so many um, sides to to him um, well, Lebanon has a very mixed population um, can you for a German audience maybe describe your own country in a few <laughs> few sentences <laughs> My country, it's a shithole, actually. <laughs> These days, it's a shithole. No, it's, um, uh, it's a mixture of uh, different sects, uh, religious groups, who uh, play in power to rule. <laughs> and uh, every 15 years, it's a group that uh, wins. So he oppresses all the others. And uh, to do that, because we are a small country and we don't have resources, they have international alliances. So whoever now is, is, is mastering the region is, uh, does what he wants in Lebanon. Actually, now at this moment, it's Iran versus uh, Saudi Arabia, USA, this part versus uh, Iran, Syria, Russia, China. <laughs> So the subgroups who are the called the Switzerland of the Middle East. <laughs> it was called, but b I think because of the bank uh, secret. It's not because <laughs> of the skiing. No, <laughs> <laughs> actually because of the bank uh, secret that now is also has f has fell because the banks are all uh, bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, also before, but after the, the explosion in the harbor of Beirut, uh, it seems that the uh, country is once again in a downward spiral politically, yeah, it's, it's economically. It's, it's collapsing uh, totally in all the institutions. Uh, no, but uh, it. I think it, it had a big potential. Lebanon had a big potential of uh, diversity, of uh, being uh, a bit um a, a plot for uh, for freedom of uh, expression for uh, journalism for uh, printing books for theater for music uh, it 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 had a role to play before but we we, we lost it with our little stupid uh, stories uh, and uh, because we are uh, like not able to not able to act as citizens we we, we, we are groups and we are like tribes who are uh, are afraid to have a one common project that could elevate us to a better place, which is to be citizens without religious uh, belonging that uh, makes us very narrow and uh, limited, let's say. You had one closed screening of the film in Lebanon. Can you tell us a little bit about that, how it was? Yeah, it w we made a screening in Lebanon for the people who uh, worked on the film and some friends and some LGBT groups because uh, this kind of topic is uh, censored in Lebanon. We cannot show it publicly because the uh, church and as well as uh, the groups, the, the, the militias, are still like having a lot of power in Lebanon. So this kind of film will not uh, pass uh, like without censorship. And uh, so we didn't uh, do a public screening. We just invited uh, a selected group. It was very emotional, very nice. Uh, what I liked about it is that for Miguel, I think it was very important to close the circle because when he left Lebanon in the 80s, he was uh, humiliated. But when we screened the film, he had a big applause. So I think this is rewarding for somebody to regain his dignity in the place that oppressed him most. And we had a screening in Tunis. I just came from there. And that was really, really overwhelming because uh, People were uh, like applauding, and it was full for three screenings. And uh, everybody was uh, hugging Miguel and kissing him. All the women of Tunisia 
really from all ages from all ages like uh, they veiled not veiled i was really surprised that they could uh, tunisia is always surprising i mean they have a, a civil society which is very very nice very active women who are very powerful and uh, there is a, a culture uh, like people like to go to cinema to theater like to debate films and uh, they showed uh, very open uh, you know open heart for uh, for miguel which i think was also very very rewarding for him it's the the oldest festival on the african continent and very important in the arab cinema world and yes, their program uh, very much focused on women's rights this year, and they showed your film with an LGBTQ topic. So yes, that was in that sense quite surprising. Yes. Um, so do you identify as a filmmaker from the Arab world? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And what is going on in, in Arab cinema at the moment? It's very vibrant, the Arab cinema. Uh, I think uh, places like Egypt are uh, surprising us with very nice films. Uh, this feather, for example, feather, feathers, yeah, feathers. Uh, it's a very uh, astonishing film in its form and content. It reminded me very much of Eastern European films. Actually. Yes, <laughs> yes, you don't feel that it's Egypt. Uh, and uh, and uh, other films also as well. Uh, it's a vibrant uh, film scene, and I think that uh, we we we're really having like every year at least ten good films coming from the Arab countries, which is very nice. And still, uh, festivals in Egypt or or other um, Arab-speaking countries would not screen your film you you were screened in tunis but is there any other event where you think miguel's war would no 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 i didn't do my film thinking about the censorship i thought that i want to make a film that really goes to yani really resembles like miguel miguel is somebody who speaks loudly about everything i didn't want to censor myself or censor him so i said okay let's play it like like him you know uh, uh, and and i was not like uh, expecting uh, to show it uh, in the arab world uh, because if i had think about it in the beginning i would have censored myself so i said i'm gonna do this film it's gonna be there maybe in 10 years people will watch it i will have done it and that was for me the most important thing is to do it are there perhaps uh, questions in the audience for Eliane? We have a microphone runner. Yeah. Uh, hi. First of all, thank you so much. This was really amazing. <laughs> okay. I really loved the thank film. You. I, I wanted to know, um, was it ever, I mean, the dynamic between you two, between you and Miguel is just astonishing. Were you ever afraid of him running off the project? Because I was sitting here and I was always tensed. It's like, are they able to finish it? Uh, in the beginning, when we uh, shot the first two days, because we didn't shoot everything uh, on a row. We, we, we used to shoot parts every, uh, every time. And uh, the first two days when we shot, uh, in Lebanon specifically, I felt that uh, it was the test for him to stay on board or not. And uh, after the two days, even though I was jeopardizing the shooting, I told him, go back to, to Barcelona, think if you want to go on with the film or not. And he like took uh, maybe uh, two weeks to tell me I will be on board, whatever happens. I give you my word. Of course, I made him sign something, but this paper is nothing when uh, your protagonist doesn't want to appear. And uh, after the big shooting of Lebanon, I felt that I was really torturing him. 
and I was uh, crying sometimes alone while t feeling that I was torturing him. Uh, but uh, somehow um, I felt that anyway uh, I wouldn't have been able to do a film without these uh, moments of uh, tension uh, because also uh, like uh, sometimes Miguel, uh, my interpretation of him, like it was instinct uh, instinctive, what I felt is that you have to push him when he's somehow stuck to to make him give you gi give you things which even surprise him him after like uh, he would sometimes like uh, be this is w uh, also when someone is stuck with his own narrative and you try to unstuck him or to to uh, he can like uh, be in the beginning uh, very tense and angry and then after it's a relief for him uh, but uh, i uh, what wh our our agreement was that he would uh, watch the rough cut before i show him i show it to the audience uh, and this is what i did after uh, one year and a half of uh, not seeing him uh, because we had a clash also uh, after I shot the film. Uh, we had a clash because I think that he mixed up uh, things we talk about uh, as friends and the shooting. For him it was all mixed. He was a bit confused uh, if I was a filmmaker or I was his friend and our talks, which ones were, were going to be put in the film or not. So I told him, I will not see you before I finish the rough cut. And when I showed him the rough cut, uh, he told me, uh, this is an honest film. And for me, that was uh, like, it's okay. After uh, he said the sentence, I, I, I finished the film and, uh, and that was it. So now we are very happy, <laughs> happy together. <laughs> We're doing fine, no problems now, on the contrary. It's very nice that you go against, I would say, every single rule that p that you learn in film school when <laughs> dealing with protagonists. Like, never show them the rough cut. <laughs> don't give them, uh, don't let them collaborate on the, on the artistic process. And here, it's very much a collaborative effort, and I like that very much about this film. Yeah, it brings a certain, it brings this honesty to the, to the project. Mm. Yes, yes. I, I, I felt that uh, I, I had to give him. I mean, the, the he gave me all the text. You know, the, 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 the words of the film are all taken from him. It was like you read a novel, you know, and then after you want to put an image or you want to confront this novel. Uh, so it was for me very natural that he would uh, collaborate in this film. And even uh, what was funny during the casting is that uh, we were sitting in the theater and the uh, people who came didn't know who he was. Uh, they thought that he's a filmmaker. Sometimes they think that he's a director. And for me, it was nice. Like, let's, let's all uh, collaborate and nobody is knowing. Who they are inventing characters and we are here. It was something very uh, entertaining also to do. Uh, and and uh, and and I, I I felt even if he could have uh, drawn, for example, I would have gave him the animations to do. So the the post production and the animations uh, that was quite a struggle, from what I understood, because it was done during Corona time. Maybe yeah. you can share a little bit with the audience um, how that worked. The animation took uh, a lot of time, not only because it was Corona time, but also because uh, you are not uh, making animation, which is only animation. So there's no like uh, timing that usually the animators tell you, you want 30 seconds and uh, there it's very scripted and you have a storyboard. The difficult thing was that I had to try rough animation and uh, and and edit them again, and give it, give them back to the animator with my uh, new uh, with my new rhythm, 
uh, new editing, and he would refine them. So it's like making the job a bit two times, uh, but it could have not worked uh, in another way because uh, the animation sometimes they bridge between the documentary and the theater, let's say. So I, they they have to really fit from the beginning. In the, the, their their in point and out point should really be linked to the uh, editing. And and if I didn't have them, I couldn't also exactly imagine or understood when I watch all the film, what is redundant, what can we remove, what is, uh, 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 you know, so it's really back and forth together. So that took a, lo a lot of time to, to be finished. Are there any other questions from the audience? Yes. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. It was very fascinating. Uh, and what I wanted to ask, I mean, the lady at the end, it was your mother. Which one? The, the, there was one older lady who, 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 who appeared several times in an apartment. My mother. It was your mother, yeah. yes. And I found that very moving, that in the end you lend your mother to him. And then you, for a moment, you, you, you yourself turned into a protagonist, and you had an encounter with you. In this one scene, you had an encounter. You had an encounter with your mother, and that turned you into a protagonist. Yeah, and true. I found that very moving. This this process. Thank you, <laughs> because this is one of the mirrors of 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 Miguel. Like he's mirroring uh, many many people and uh, many other uh, little stories. Which for me, it would have been, uh, it was obvious for me that w this is also when you meet someone from the beginning, it's not a choice I took only uh, uh, when I filmed. I, it's an inner uh, feeling that I had in the beginning when I met him that I know his patterns very well and I could uh, imagine uh, his mother like my mother, you know? So I, when, when, uh, in the shooting, I was thinking that uh, I want to substitute the mother, so I brought my mother. And then it, she became also, as you are saying, uh, a mirror for me and uh, to tell also a bit of myself, like also the actor who was playing his dad, who also like turned out to have a similar story with his own mother. So it's uh, also to make the story bigger and to uh, show that uh, it's it's something in our uh, collective memory also in our pattern and what about the role of the drag queen ruben cardoso <laughs> ruben <laughs> yes uh ruben uh, i think uh, if miguel would have had uh, the courage to or the choice to uh, to be something in the in the art uh, like in the performance he would have been like uh, Ruben so um, I think that it was nice to put them together and what was very funny is that Ruben who seems to be you know like really a drag queen or is sometimes shocked by the stories <laughs> of Miguel <laughs> so um, his nightlife stories or his war stories? No, nightlife mm -hmm. stories. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be with us in our screening in Barcelona. So I, I look forward also for the premiere in Barcelona for Ruben to, to watch the film. There was another question in the back. Um, yes, thank you for the great film. Um, I um, wanted to come, I, I wanted to ask about the actor's point you just talked about before so yeah because I found it so great how the um, stories of the um, actors during the castings and so on would become um, or how, how their part in Miguel's story would become their personal story somehow or would connect so I was wondering like how much of uh, this goes for the whole movie how much did you plan and know which people you would have there and how much was um, coming in this some kind of experimental process because it was so uh, honest and natural <laughs> somehow that it 
ja. Um, I wrote the script for the film before uh, shooting, but uh, I left parts open, which are, uh, of course, all the improvisations of the casting, uh, the research of Tony, uh, and uh, the research of Ta'la. These are, uh, and of course, like the interaction between uh, every person I would bring and Miguel, wh whoever he uh, or she is, the actors or uh, or the people who would uh, uh, like the 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 the, the, the ex-fighters also. These were open. Like I knew that I want to search for them or bring them, but the outcome. I would leave it open and uh, in the editing, I would really uh, structure it. But uh, I, I like there are scenes which are really written, but not in the sense that uh, people are uh, just they're like not not uh, not uh, repeating them. But I I had imagined what would could could have happened if I put Miguel in those uh, situations. So it's like a script for, uh, as if I'm writing a fiction film with a dramaturgy, you know? Uh, and, and for me, uh, uh, this happened when, when, when the protagonist is not uh, only a protagonist, but is a metaphor. So you can, if he is a metaphor, you can go into levels where you can imagine um it's for me like a fairy tale you know like uh, a boy who has a past to to have and to uh, who, who is looking for happiness somebody who's uh, looking for happiness and people who help him or or or, or don't uh, and i think he grows in the end like i really th think that between uh, the first miguel that you see in the part of the film who is a bit, you know, provocative and who laughs loudly, whoever. And at the end, I think that you feel that he has changed a bit. So I really uh, 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 structured the film like this. And um, it's a hero's journey. It's an anti-hero journey, <laughs> <laughs> an anti-hero who can become maybe a hero. But uh, I like anti-heroes, by the way, I don't like heroes. Uh, and I think that uh, also uh, the, 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 the girls who appear in the film, speci especially Maria, and also Ruben, uh, like are, are uh, the people who can help him, you know? Like uh, Maria, I think, uh, substitute his family. And uh, by chance, I appeared in his life when she was going with uh, Tomato, his, her, her boyfriend. So I think also like it's a continuation like of uh, women who come by chance to help him or not help him. It's not I don't like the word help to walk with him uh, and be his allies. So it's like the fairies. If we it is, yeah, it's classical fairy tale dramaturgy. Fairy tale. Yeah, yes, it's fairy tale. Okay, and any other questions in the audience? <laughs> <laughs> Just a very, very brief one. How difficult was it to get these um, former fighters to really also talk about their experiences? Well, you have a lot of experience with that. Yes, uh, but uh, no, not much. In fact, uh, it's to find them more than uh, they talk about it. It's uh, to try to find the, the real ones who fought. Because a lot of people say that they fought, but they didn't. They are um, like fantasizing about uh, have been, you know, fighting in the war. It's like uh, manhood, you know, masculinity. We fought in the war. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> war was beautiful. Yes. <laughs> um, the real ones who really like know about the field and had are not many who you can you can find them and some of lot of them left in fact left lebanon they disappeared and uh, i don't know where they are uh, living now but once you find them it's not very difficult to talk well uh, 
just for those of you who have not seen Elian's previous films, but yeah, m a lot of your films deal with the civil war, with uh, with Lebanon's history. So you do have experience uh, interviewing these people, working with them intensely. Yes, uh, yes. In fact, the one who found uh, the Tony for me, the real Tony, is an axe fighter that I had in my previous film, who knows them all. And uh, yeah, I have <laughs> I have a, a, some connection to them through Assad Shaftari, who was uh, the main protagonist of my film Sleepless Nights. Also very recommended, if you <laughs> can see it somewhere. Rabia, uh, how are we with the time? Uh, actually, we are good. We can have one last question. Mm -hmm. Just one uh, a question about the Arab cinema from what uh, the things that you were talking at the beginning. You said uh, many films are coming out now. Uh, like from Egypt, uh, unexpectedly, because those countries are having really a very poor supporting system, public support for the cinema. Lebanon is collapsing economically, the banks are bankrupting. So how come they still can make films? How, uh, I mean, what do they rely on when, for instance, from Lebanon, a young filmmaker, how can make a film? Of course, you have connection, you know, a lot about you know to final and especially from this experience because I know that your film was produced by you yourself, which is very difficult production with all this animation and uh, all this long time, long uh, period of filming, editing. Yeah, how they survive? Um, I like the. The I think it's only Morocco who have really uh, a film commission, a film commission with a budget uh, for making feature films. All the other countries, uh, they 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 have uh, they have maybe a bit of support from their own uh, state, uh, like Tunis have a bit of support, but the rest they go and search for it in the world. Um, well, there are now, what, what's good about it is that there have been many festivals with platforms. Uh, platforms that connect uh, uh, producers and filmmakers together. And sometimes it's a whole adventure without any money. I know many people, like Salim Rad, uh, one of my ex-students, does all his film with his friends. They like him, so they all work for free. And he still do does it. I mean, it's not only his first film. I think now he has made three films like this, three or four films. It's just him and his friends. And they just do it. Uh, or sometimes uh, you have a producer who can, who have some connection in the world. He can try to find some money. But it's very, very low budget films. We're talking about low budget films. My film, an, an average budget for it would have been 300,000 uh, euros. This is the average. I did it with 140,000. And all the rest, it's my work for free. And uh, I even paid for, uh, uh, for the things, the animation, for example, to lot of more money that, uh, than we expected, so I had to pay for it. So we don't live out of making films, if this is for your question also. We all somehow teach or uh, have other uh, jobs uh, to fill the gap of financing, but we're not uh, rich people. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, like uh, every film is taking maybe uh, three, four years. It's not supposed to take that time. I also am distributing my own film yeah. <laughs> to tell you also, like I'm doing all the festival circles. And uh, uh, so it's really like this will take time also to it will take two, two more years uh, of my life with this film touring with it and sending into sending it to festivals 
so yeah, it will take like uh, now five years with this film between uh, the beginning, the end, and the distribution. It will take somehow five years. So we, we do films, but it's not many films. And I think um, although the, 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 the landscape is very bad uh, in terms of economy, in terms of politics, in terms of uh, future, but uh, there is, I think with all the crisis, there is always a counter uh, uh, part or image, which is uh, the will to, 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 to do things despite everything and to be creative and to be under pressure and under um, oppression. I think all this also, you have countries where nothing happens and they don't have a good cinema, although they have a lot of money, but they don't have anything to say. So we have a lot of things to say and I think this is the counter <laughs> part of uh, the good part of the bad story. <laughs> Well, I think this goes for most films here in the uh, Southern Lights Festival. Uh, countries where a lot of things are happening, uh, but very little money for, for film production. I have one last question about the title of your film. Mm. Like in Arabic, it means something totally different than Miguel's War. Can you tell us where the Arabic title came from, what it means? And the Arabic title, Anaf Hub, means the most violent love. Uh, the working title of the film was Miguel's War. That was uh, always uh, the working title. And uh, when I uh, wanted to uh, to think what... I don't like Harb Miguel in Arabic because uh, it, 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 uh, it makes you directly think of the civil war. When you say a war, you know, it directly uh, in our countries, because we live uh, all the wars, uh, it will make you think the about... the double meaning that it has in English, like the struggle inside himself. Yes, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. so, so I thought that uh, I want to, in Arabic, to use something that is violent, which is uh, violent, anaf, uh, but, but also add love, because... Uh, I think it's a quest. The film is a quest for love, so I wanted to uh, to use this dimension in Arabic so that at least the Arab audience doesn't think that they're going to watch another film on the war because they are depressed already. <laughs> 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 but in English, it's uh, it's it it makes sense. Miguel's war is intriguing because it's uh, uh, on the fur. You know, it's someone's war. It's not like uh, civil war of Lebanon. It's Miguel's war. It makes sense. Um, and to 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 say it in in uh, in uh, to say the meaning of anaf hub most violent uh, love in in English, it's a bit uh, I think complicated. So I left it. Uh, like this. And the Arabic also came from a song text that we heard during the final credits. Yes, <laughs> yes. I was uh, thinking uh, about the title when I, want, I was thinking uh, about love. And I had many other titles. And then I remembered this song, which we hear in the credit title. It's, uh, it is Hub uh, Aya Hub. It means she's searching for all the sifat or an al hub attributes of love and then she says I want the most violent love so I said oh th that's the <laughs> title <laughs> yeah okay thank you so much I, I, have, a, oh. I have a last question uh, it's just because what you were saying before which I thought was very interesting that we have so much crisis in our countries and this results in activity um, your film of course is not just an LGBTIQ film it's a film about identity and all of these things but what I found very interesting, maybe after the Arab Spring, or this so-called period that is called Arab Spring, there are so many LGBTIQ films that mm. came from the whole Arab world, mostly documentaries, because fictions are still not properly funded. But many of your students actually managed to express themselves, and their films are not just LGBTIQ, but they are also films about their situation, the life in the country, the life in the Arab world, how society is treating them and all of that. How important is it now that the Arab world is 
in constant change uh, and collapsing and renewing itself and all of these things. Why do you think it's important now that these people are coming with their stories? Because I think when you talk about a revolution in the Arab world, a political revolution, it cannot be alone without uh, you revolting on everything that you don't like, uh, which is the system itself. And the system in all these countries is a patriarchal system, is a system of corruption, is a system of uh, killing the individual identities to make it you know, one big identity, which is uh, uh, mainstream identity and uh, for example this film F feathers all the argument uh, against it was this is not the uh, uh, image of Egypt as if Egypt with uh, with its 120 million people has one image this is the uh, uh, total propaganda of uh, media who says oh this is the the, the image of uh, Egypt and if we show poverty in a film it's not the uh, the image of Egypt because Egypt is only uh, camels and uh, pyramids. Feathers won in Tunis, by the way. It <laughs> yes. won all the main awards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think that also the new generation of people is pushed to the extreme and feels that if they want to make a revolution, it's everything. I mean, it's in your identity to prove that there is uh, not only one Arab person, there are million and that it's diverse and it's vibrating and it's uh, trying to challenge the taboos, the patriarchal system. Um, so yeah, LGBT is one of those uh, challenging uh, uh, issues in the Arab world. And uh, I think that once one has done a film about it, many will do a film a films about it because it gi it gives it gives courage there is a community now doing films and trying to challenge uh, uh, all the mainstreams and censorship okay thank you so much for this very interesting talk and for your film and i wish you a lot of luck with the self distribution <laughs> and i hope that next to doing the distribution and the festivals and and hanging out with miguel you will also find the time to make a next film yeah <laughs> i have an idea but <laughs> <laughs> that's good we need money now <laughs> uh, any producers here interested <laughs> Okay, and thank you so much, Rabi, for the invitation. Uh, thank you, It Rabia. was a, a pleasure. And thank you for being here, and have a good night. Thank you.